IVA Hall for refusing to financially assist my uncle because when the situations were reversed, he didn't financially assist my parents to die. Fifteen years ago, my family suffered a series of unfortunate events that forced us on the edge of poverty. Fortunately, through the generosity of our extended family, we managed to make it through to the other end, if just barely. This generosity meant that much more, considering that most of my extended family themselves suffered from financial hardship. The exception is my uncle. At the time, he was several years into his career as an engineer at one of the top engineering firms, and yet he entirely ignored my family's plight. While my family struggled, Jeff was flaunting a six-figure BMW, which is his right, of course. Though I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel some resentment, but I understand that this resentment stemmed from a place of entitlement. Fast forward 15 years, and fortunately my family are much better off. I've since graduated, almost a decade into my career, and I'm in a fortuitous position of being able to ensure that my family never has to worry about money ever again. In those same 15 years, my uncle has found his own engineering firm and was wildly successful, until the pandemic forced his business into involuntary administration. The situation is now dire enough that several months ago, my uncle began asking the extended family for financial assistance. But what he needed was beyond what the extended family could provide, though the extended family did do the best that they could, and thus far kept silent. Unfortunately, that silence has not gone by unnoticed. My uncle called me earlier today asking for a $10,000 loan to keep his son enrolled in his son's private school. He tried to sell me some sob story about how disruptive it would be to my cousin's development if he would be forced to change schools in his pivotal development period. Frankly, I don't see how any of that is my problem. Had my uncle supported my family when we asked him for it, I would have gone to the moon and back for him, as I have done for the members of my extended family that did help my family. But he didn't, so why should I? Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. I was thinking two wrongs don't make a right, and helping him out would be great. Until I got to $10,000 loan to keep his son enrolled in his son's private school. So, if it were to keep your uncle off the street or out of the soup kitchen, I'd say help him. But to keep your cousin in an expensive private school? Nope, that's a luxury nobody needs, especially when you're in a financial trouble. His posh school is not your problem. Two wrongs absolutely make a right. Also, while we're on the topic, I always tell people to take the high road, so that way it will leave more room for me on the low road. Not today, Hall. A private school is not need to have, it is nice to have. He wouldn't even help you with need to have, so you most definitely do not need to finance his nice to have. Fully agree with this. Not today, Hall. He's not entitled to give you help, although it would have been nice and kind, but you're not entitled to help either. He wants to save face and keep his son in private school. This kid will be fine in a public school until he gets back on his feet. The fact that he couldn't even offer you guys a hundred dollars when you desperately needed it to keep food on the table, he now expects you to give him ten thousand dollars? Nuh uh. God forbid you're in a bad financial situation again, cause I don't see him offering help in the future. Not today, Hall. We call this karma. Also, ten thousand dollars for private school? If we were in hardship, I would place my child somewhere else. Your uncle sounds entitled. Maybe he should sell his car. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for revealing to my wife's family we did purchase our house, but it was inherited from my mother? To start, I want to mention that my wife and my late mother never had a very strong relationship. Yes, they were cordial to each other, but had many disagreements. Mom passed away and left me a one-story house as my only inheritance. No one lived in it after she renovated it, so it looked fairly new. My wife was happy and excited when we moved in that she posted a video on social media and wrote that the house was bought with our money. I didn't know about her saying that until later. Her aunt was visiting from a distance to see the house my wife told her we purchased. We sat to eat and chat a bit, and her aunt brought up the house's value asking how we could afford to buy it so suddenly. I was confused as my wife went on about putting money we've saved together towards buying it. I asked what she was talking about. And her aunt said my wife told her the house was bought with our money and cost X amount. I corrected her saying this wasn't true, because this house belonged to my mom and she gave it to me after her passing. I added that no, we're not doing well financially to be able to afford this house. Room went radio silence. My wife's aunt said, what? 
I'm sorry, I didn't know that. My wife's cousin side eyed her and said, "So, isn't this mother-in-law the same mother-in-law you hated for years? Shame she's not here, so you can thank her for leaving you this nice house." My wife was stunned at this point and excused herself to the bathroom. She didn't come out till they left. Then she blew up at me, asking why I told them the house was inherited from my mom and making her look like a liar in front of them. I redirected a question at her and asked why she told them otherwise. She said there was no harm in showing off our new property and that people will appreciate us more for saying we bought it with our own money instead of inheriting it. I argued that this was wrong and it fair for my mom, even if they never got along. She argued that I ruined her joy and humiliated her in front of her family, and because the word got out. Now everyone knows and will think she is a liar when I could have simply played along, since my mom wouldn't possibly mind it or cause an issue over it now that she's deceased. So it won't matter to her. I stormed out after arguing with her and refusing to admit I messed up by not being part of the lie. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I didn't know about what my wife was doing up until that dinner. I then discovered a social media post and how many family and friends thought this house was purchased with our own money. I even have no idea how long this has been going on. Made her look like a liar. Didn't make her look like one. Her own behavior made her a liar. Not today, Hall. Well, I ain't calling her a truther. Not today, Hall. She ain't no truther. Not today, Hall. She's the sole reason she feels bad. She's lucky to have an honest husband. She didn't tell you her story, meaning she knew that you wouldn't like it. She should have been honest with you instead of expecting you to lie. Also. I feel that it's not considerate or equal that she dismissed what you and your family was able to offer her, and instead take the credit. Disrespectful and manipulative. I hope she can come to her senses and take accountability for her actions. Not today, Hall. Your wife is a liar and should never have said that. Give credit where credit is due. Your mom deserves the credit. Plain and simple. Plus, it sounds like she was bad mouthing your mom more than you know. The way the aunt said. Oh, the woman you hated? Definitely not today, Hall. Not today, Hall. She called you a liar. You were not the one who lied here. You did not know she had made up this act. How could you play along? And why would you? This is completely disrespectful to your mother and her memory. Regardless if they got along or not, you don't have to like someone to be respectful. You did not make her look like a liar or humiliate her. She made herself rightfully look like a liar and humiliated herself. She should not be upset with you at all. She should be upset with herself. She owes you and her family a huge apology. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for turning a family vacation home into an Airbnb and charging my cousin to have her wedding there? Some background. My grandparents owned a four-bedroom lake house with about an acre of land for about 25 years. Through the years. They hosted many family events, and people visited often to get a free getaway. Then last year, they wanted to move into a nice old folks' home that's basically a resort, and to do that and finance the rest of the years, they sold their main condo and put this up for sale. I bought it at what was a fair rate at the time, and it has since gone up in value about 25% due to the recent housing surge. I just finished with some renovations and officially got it listed on Airbnb as a side hustle. This summer, I've gotten lots of requests from family to visit, and I've said no because it's being renovated. I also told them I intend to use it as an income stream, not a family vacation home. I got some pushback, but held firm. Well, now my cousin just got engaged, and they want to plan a May 2022 wedding on a specific day that has significance to them. This will end up being over Memorial Day weekend. My cousin Jean called me and asked if they could have it at the lake house since there's so much land for an outdoor wedding. And she and her fiance met there years ago. His family's friends with our family. I told her that I anticipate renting it out that weekend, and that she can have first dibs for the days needed, and sent her the link to reserve it. She then realized this would run her close to six thousand plus deposits and service fees, so really like eight thousand. She flipped out, saying that this is a family event at a family house, so I shouldn't charge. She then said it should be like my wedding gift. I told her, Jean, my wedding was three years ago, and you got me a set of knives, which I do like. It's not really fair to say I should basically give you six thousand dollars. She flipped, called me greedy and a terrible family member, then hung up. Since this, my parents, aunt and uncle, and one sister all told me that I was being greedy as well. My brother who helped with the renovations is on my side hundred percent, 
And my grandparents told me they'd love to see a wedding there, but said they sold me the house with no conditions, so they won't pressure me. But I've been getting so much flack from a couple of people in my family. Edit. I'm done responding to comments now due to how many I've gotten, but to answer comment questions. In purchasing it from my grandparents, I made it clear that it would no longer be a family home and that I would be using it for an income stream. They knew this before selling. Jean and I are not close. She's one of 13 cousins on that side of the family. We are seven years apart and see each other probably one to two times a year at most. Part of my thinking for charging is that I don't want my place to turn into a de facto family spot. It was not cheap. It had to take out mortgage to pay for it. For people not from the US, Memorial Day weekend is probably the most popular weekend for pool parties slash lake house rentals, etc. It's literally the most valuable weekend to own a lake house. I told her to give her first dibs on it before opening it up to anyone, but it will easily get rented that weekend otherwise. The current price that people have called ridiculous is based off what the surrounding places of this size are going for. Since listing at that rate, it has been getting booked super fast, and I've been encouraged to raise the rate. It is not overpriced for its market at all. What I would charge is actually less than what the average venue would charge for the number of guests she wants. She'd be saving about 40% from what a traditional venue would charge. I would also only charge the normal rate, not the holiday rate that Airbnb told me I should, and would for anyone else. So that is effectively a 30% discount off the bat. Now for the comments. I get why she asked, but she and your whole family, except brother and grandparents, you have to remember this isn't a family property anymore. You shelled out cold, hard cash for it and spent more money renovating it. Not day whole. If she wants her wedding there, she has to pay. Maybe there's some sort of discount you could throw her way, but not required. And doesn't sound like she'd even appreciate it. This. It is no longer a family home. You used your money to purchase and renovate it. You need to make this clear to your family that it is not a vacation home for them to use. For all intents and purposes, it is a venue for those who rent out for party weekends, etc. I agree that you could offer them a discount for that weekend. If you do choose to offer them a discount, I would make sure that it is through the website so that any incidentals are covered slash that is insured. Not day whole. This is why I think it's always a bad idea to buy what was once family property. The family that doesn't buy it always expects to continue using it. I inherited the 120-year-old family home. It took about five years for most of my relatives to stop assuming that they could just show up and stay with me for a week or whatever. Some of them still haven't learned, even after having the door shut in their faces. I'm not my grandmother or her father. I don't do drop-in long-term visitors just because they're family. You're the a-hole. Notice your grandparents try to gently persuade you? You are within your rights legally, but the cost to your familial relationship may be severe. It is interesting that you admit that the date is significant. They didn't intend it to be a holiday weekend. And you admit that they even met there, so it has sentimental connection. You could choose to make money and be viewed as the guy who ruined the family getaway, or you could decide to allow weddings to be held there. Not free annual vacations, just the big events. And be viewed as a generous and beloved family member. The one you prioritize is up to you. Last story. Am I the a-hole for adjusting the budget for gifts for nieces and nephews after my brother gained stepkids? My brother was a single dad to Kai, 10 male, and Ella, 8 female, since Ella was a baby. I was always a pretty generous aunt because for the most part, really expensive stuff for common interests. Game console, trampoline, go-kart. So they shared and didn't mind. I could also do more small stuff because it was two versus a bunch of them. I even secured them a PS5, thanks to a friend with the initial pre-orders went up and it cost me a ton. But it was a joint birthday gift for both. They have September and November birthdays. In October, my brother announced he was engaged and the wedding was two weeks away. We found out his wife lived across the country with her kids and was moving in the day before the wedding. It was a big surprise, but what was worse was, apparently, even though I got something for all kids, he was pissed off at me for spending less than I had past years. I decided nothing for months. Then a six-year-old stepson's birthday was last week, and he confronted me afterward. He said I hadn't spent as much as I usually do, that I financially treated my bi niece slash nephew different to my step nieces slash nephews, and that the birthday gift showed that. I told him that wasn't true, and it was unfair for me to increase my budget to include four more kids, 
which would cost me thousands on Christmas alone and for birthday gifts throughout the year. I said I had budget for each kid at Christmas and had the same plan for birthdays, and that yes, it was less individually than other years. But technically, I still spent more than I had previously. But I just did it so I could be both fair and not put myself into debt. He said it was still favoritism at her to step kids because they saw the stuff kind Al got from me the past years and what they got from me. I told him he couldn't expect people to spend the same per kid for six as they did for two. Pointed out it was a huge difference. He thinks I was an a-hole for it. Am I? Is he right here? Not a hole. Your brother is not the sharpest tool in the shed. You are doing everything right. He moved his wife and her four kids in the day before the wedding. Obviously, he is not very sharp. Not a hole. First of all, gifts are extras, not things you should take for granted. Second, I would think his bi kids would have a harder time adjusting to everything in their life being turned upside down on such short notice. Had they even met their new siblings before they moved in? Third, how do these stepkids know who bought everything? Did your brother go through the house and label gifts with a giver and price tag? Something is wrong here. Either his new wife is pushing this or is trying to compensate slash smooth things over in your dime. They had met once before. About a month before they moved in with them, my brother took them for a visit. Not sure how they knew. It could be a huge exaggeration on my brother's part too. Not they home. Your brother is an idiot who thinks you have unlimited funds and got used to you spoiling the kids. But instead of being grateful for everything you've given them thus far, that they can share with their step-siblings. He's angry because he can no longer afford to spend ludicrous amounts on six kids. He's probably feeling his finances aren't going as far as they used to, but is taking it out on the wrong person. My issue with the whole thing is the kids don't share a common interest anymore as a group. Kind of do. But what they like the others don't like. My step-nieces and step-nephews have different interests to each other and different to what kind L like. So the one big gift thing is gone too. But I bet he will complain that I don't give anything for them all to use too.